Hey guys, this is Christy from Christy's Creations. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this adorable little ladder shelf. A uh, client asked me to build this for her master bathroom. She said she doesn't have a whole lot of storage space and she wanted somewhere to keep her hair products, makeup, things like that. Um, and I did build it eh, kind of to her specs, so that's why these aren't spaced evenly. And um, yeah, what you need is listed down below as, long as, as well as the cut list. But it is super simple. You can create this whole thing out of a one by four by 10 board. Um, really, you could use any lumber you want, but that's what I use for this. It is 25 inches tall by 20 inches wide. The cut list includes two 25 inch cuts with three 18 and a half inch cuts. Uh, it's not 20 inches because you do have to count for the sides here, which are about three quarters of an inch thick. Other materials you're going to need is stain, paint, polyurethane, sandpaper, paint brushes, and mounting hardware. Is that it? That's it. The sandpaper I used was a 60 grit and a 120 grit. Uh, I cut corners with sanding because I hate sanding. The other things you may need are a sander, if you're like me and you really detest sanding, a miter saw and a Craig jig or a pocket hole jig. I didn't have to buy anything for this except for the mounting hardware, but if you did have to buy everything from the stain to the paint to the poly, this could rack you up a little bit just because that kind of stuff is expensive. The lumber for this, if you bought a 1x4x10, is $6.67. Other than that, um, you can create it to be the way you want it. If you don't want it to be distressed, you can just buy the paint and you don't have to do the stain and the poly and everything. Uh, since I know this is going to be in a bathroom, I did give it three coats of poly just because I wanted to have that nice protective layer because it is going to be in a humid environment. But make it yours. It does not have to fall in my plane at all. It could be taller, it could be skinnier, it could be whatever you want. This is your project. I think this would be super cute in like a living room or a kitchen with some plants growing on it. Now that I made this, I kind of want one for myself, but stay tuned. I'll walk you through it step by step. This is going to follow the same basic principles as my ladder blankets, but on a much smaller scale. So I've got a couple pieces of boards laid out here. This one is what I'm hoping to use for the sides of the blanket lab, or I'm sorry, the blanket shelf. Um, but it is a little bit warped, so I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it does have this nice bow right in the middle of it. So we'll see what I can do with that. If this doesn't end up working out, I do have some extra lumber. Um, but the client does want it to be about 25 inches long by 20 inches wide with three shelves. So this is a little bit long for 20 inches. It's about 22, so it won't be quite this long, but it's about the size and about half the size of this. So I'm gonna get some things set up and then we'll get going. So I'm gonna talk in here because outside is kind of windy, um, but you can see behind me, I've got everything set up that I need. Normally I like to sand first with the belt sander. This is crooked, with the belt sander, but I can't find it. So I'm under the assumption that my husband probably loaned it out to somebody without telling me, which is fine. I've got a regular palm sander. It's just gonna take a lot longer to do it that way, but um, it is what it is. You make it work. So I am going to just go ahead and cut all of my pieces to size behind me and we'll give it a light sanding, put it together, and then we'll sand again. But um, I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but that piece that's on the saw right now is that bowed piece. And looking at it, I'm not quite sure that's gonna work. I'll cut it up and see how it looks after it's a little bit shorter, but it's not looking good. So I do have more lumber uh, that I had planned for another project, but it's fine. <laughs> It'll make it work. And um, one other thing I do wanna talk about, I don't, ugh, I'm gonna go out here, see if it's too windy. So when I first started woodworking, this is something I learned that helped me quite a bit. So if you look at this piece, this has been cut already and it's a nice, smooth, very, very straight piece. On the other side, you probably can't tell that, but it is a rough sawn texture. So this is what came factory grade. Let's see if you can see it on another piece. 
So like this piece, there's a ton of texture. There's still this tag on it and a staple. Definitely want to take that staple off before using the saw on it because it can ruin the blade. Um, but don't leave it like this when you're trying to build like a blanket ladder or something where you have to have a nice butt up against something else. <laughs> I know you experience woodworkers out there probably think I'm like dumb for not thinking about that, but it is something I had to learn the hard way. So if you're brand new to this, cut off the rough saw edge. All right, I'm gonna set you up so you can watch me cut and we'll meet back up at the workshop. Okay, so we're back in the workshop, and unfortunately, while I was measuring for the rail pieces, or the rungs, I keep messing that up, the rungs, the shelf part, the flat part of the shelf. While I was measuring those pieces, a little burst of wind come through and it broke my camera stand, which is very sad. And it's unfortunately in a piece where I can't fix. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to buy a new selfie sli stick slash camera stand, which breaks my heart. Not really. Don't tell my husband. It's fine, because he loaned out my sander without telling me. So it's even, right? Okay, so in selfie mode, I've got my three rung pieces and my two rail pieces. And now that I'm looking at them, they don't look as bad as I thought. I think I'm gonna be able to make this work. So I'm super excited. But I'm gonna have to figure out a way to film it because I don't have a stand. So bear with me and we'll do a little time lapse. So what I'm gonna do is in my rung pieces, I'm going to do two Craig jig holes, pocket holes in either side to attach it to the rails. So it's gonna look something like this. Okay, so it's gonna look something close to that. Cause she wants it to hold her bathroom products. So I'm gonna put a little more space between here, I think. I might actually go grab like a hairspray bottle or something, so that we get the spacing right on this, but this is more or less, I think, how it's gonna look. So pocket holes are going to be, ooh, this, this is gonna be a struggle. Probably I might put them on the bottom, or I might do it on the top, I don't know. Stay tuned, but the point of it is so that you don't see the pocket hole screws, but since it's going to be on a wall, Hmm, I'm not sure. Normally with my blanket ladders, I don't really worry about it because you put it on the bottom and you don't ever see it and there's blankets on top of it so it like really camouflages them. But with this, it's gonna make me think. So stay tuned, I'll let you know what I do. together with a clamp to see the spacing. We'll see if I can do this without tipping it over. Um, and I just cleared it with my client because she wants this for her bathroom so I wanted it to work for her. But what I did was just brought out a bunch of my bathroom products just to see like if it was my shelf where I would want things. So I've got about nine and a half inches of space here, I think. About nine and three quarter. Uh, yeah, about nine and a half. And then I've got six, just under six inches of space here. And then obviously unlimited space on the top, so you could put taller items if they don't fit here. But this does. But um, and I did decide to go ahead and put the pocket holes on the bottom. Um, even if I, you know, if you hang it really high, you don't really notice them. So 
I'm going to take all this off, put it back in the house, and screw it together. Together. I don't know if you could tell in the time lapse or not, but I spent a ton of time trying to get it square and level because the lumber I started out with on the rails was not square to begin with. You remember it had that warp, so it takes a lot more work to do it that way. It's much, much easier if you can have a nice straight piece of lumber to begin with. But unfortunately, with COVID-19, um, it's... I'm not going to Home Depot just to get a new piece of lumber for this. Um, when I can make it work here, it just takes a little extra effort. So what I'm going to do next is sand again um, with 120 grit sandpaper just to buff out any of the imperfections that have happened while I was working on it on this bench. And then I'll go over with a medium to dark stain. So the client wants a white shelf, but she doesn't want it to look distressed. So that's how I'm gonna make that happen is I'll stain the whole thing dark first. Um, probably use like a walnut, like a medium walnut. And then once that's dried and set, probably tomorrow, I'll go over it with a white paint. I almost said whitewash, but it's not going to be whitewash because you do want the paint to be the primary color that you see. Um, but I might thin it up just a little bit. Um, so it's just a little bit easier to distress and some of that distress does come through. So I'm excited about that process. I love doing distress projects. It's not, it's not everybody's style. So I get really excited when somebody does want something that is distressed. So stay tuned. <laughs> So I finished up staining the shelf with Early American by Minwax. I'm going to let that dry overnight because it does take eight hours for it to cure and finish and do its good business before I can put the paint on. And um, so yeah, this is how it looks. The lighting is terrible in here because I had to shut the garage door because there is, a, like I said, a storm blowing in. But we're done with that for the night. Come back in the morning and put the final coat on. Good morning, guys. So the shelf has been drying overnight. It's actually been about 19 hours, which is a little bit of overkill. The stain really only needs eight hours to cure and dry, but I am going to put white paint over the top of it. So I don't want the stain to bleed through that um, and letting it dry for an excessive amount of time is how I do that. What I'm going to do next is cover the entire thing with one or two coats of the white paint, just depending on how it looks to me. Um, a lot of the times I do use two coats of white paint just so that I have that full coverage. After it dries to be a little bit tacky, um, then I'll go through and distress the edges. I don't want it to cure completely just because that makes it a little tougher to get it to distress the way I want it to. Um, so I'm gonna gather up my supplies and I'll meet back up with you after it's painted so I can show you how I do my distressing technique. Welcome back. So this has had a couple of hours to go ahead and dry and cure. I had to go to the grocery store, so it's a little bit longer than I normally would have done this, but um, it is dry to the touch. It's not tacky. Although if I scrape my nail on it, it does come up pretty easily. I'm going to be using my palm sander for this. Um, a lot of people just hand sand it, but I hate sanding. I'm using my palm sander. It just makes it go a lot faster for me. Uh, I am using 120 grit sandpaper that has been used before, so it's not a super coarse grit. You could use something finer if you're worried, but I've had pretty good luck doing it this way. And I am going to hit the whole project um, 
with the sander, but I'm really gonna focus on the edges. But I'm not going so deep that it's showing the raw wood. I wanna see that stain come through. <clears throat> um, so stay tuned, I'm gonna go through and sand this and um, after I sand and I'm happy with the final look, I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple coats of polyurethane. Um, I am using a water-based polyurethane. Um, from Verithane. It has a really fast dry time and I've had such great luck using this product on my other projects. And since this is going to be in a bathroom, I'll probably do three coats, three, four coats, um, it's because I want it to be protected from moisture. Stay tuned. All right, so you can see that behind me, it has all been sanded. Um, I do need to go through and wipe it down really well before I put the polyurethane on, but I did want to just give a close up to you guys so you can see how it looks. So the point of this is not to be perfect. Um, there's pieces of it that I wish I would have hit less. There's pieces of it that I kind of probably could have hit more. Um, like right here, I'm not loving how that looks, but if the client doesn't like it, she can put that to the back side of the wall. Um, but all I did was use my palm sander, I focused on the edges, and I did hit the middle too. I really like the way that turned out. Um, just so it has a little more authentic, rustic look. So I'm gonna set you back up, put some poly on it, and she'll be ready to go. That's it guys thank you so much for watching i hope this project inspired some of you to go out and build your own ladder shelf if you do like this video go ahead and give me a big thumbs up like comment subscribe share with all your friends and i'll catch you in the next video bye